Thank you. Technology has brought humanity amazing progress. We can cure diseases that used to kill millions of people. We can fly around the world in jets, and it's one of the safest ways to travel. We all have supercomputers in our pockets that let us instantly communicate with anyone on the planet and access most of the world's information. Over the past 100 years or so, we've built an incredible technology-driven global society. But we've also unintentionally built a global economy that relies on several billion carbon-burning machines, from car engines to coal plants to steel mills, the global economy runs on carbon. And in the coming decades, we need to decouple technological progress and human thriving from the burning of carbon. And the main thing we need to do to achieve that is clear. We need to build several billion machines that don't burn carbon to replace the ones that do. And we need to do this really, really fast about five times faster than we built all of those billions of original machines in the first place. It's gonna to be tough, but as it turns out, building new technology at massive scale is something humanity is really, really good at. Uh, let's be honest, it's how we got in this mess in the first place. Now, we need to build carbon neutral machines and we need to build and deploy them faster than we've ever built anything in history. Here's why I'm optimistic we can do this. First reason, we've done things like this on a smaller scale many times before. At the start of World War II in 1939, the United States produced about 3,000 airplanes per year. We needed many more airplanes to win the war. And by just six years later, we were producing 300,000 airplanes per year. That's a hundredfold increase in production of complicated machines in just six years. Another example, smartphones, those pocket-sized uh, computers that are in constant communication with a vast global information network. Well, the first smartphone, uh, the, well, the iPhone, appeared in 2007. And in just 15 years since, we've uh, built about 6.6 .6 billion iPhones. That's enough for 84% of people on the planet to have one in just 15 years. Reason number two, climate action is actually hugely popular. In a recent global survey, the vast majority of participants said that they are deeply concerned about the climate crisis and concerned about its impact on their own lives. And what's more, the proportion of people uh, who care about the climate crisis is rising sharply in recent years. Uh, global support for climate action is strong and getting stronger every day. Uh, reason number three, better technology is a powerful lever for driving behavior change. New technologies give people uh, a, a better option that's cheaper than the one that came before it. And a sufficiently cheap and effective clean energy technology can swiftly overtake global markets. And we've seen this happen in recent years with the rise of utility scale solar power. In many places, the cheapest new electrons on the grid come from solar power. And in many cases, it's cheaper to build new solar power than to operate an existing coal plant. It's no surprise that as clean technologies mature, they will continue to accrue cost and performance advantages, and the old fossil technologies will become ever more uncompetitive. Reason number four, more good news. We have most of the technology we need already to decarbonize the global economy. Technologies like solar, wind, geothermal, nuclear, advanced batteries, electric vehicles, heat pumps. We know what we need to do, and we have the tools to do it. We just need to build and deploy these technologies much, much faster. And lastly, innovation. 
for the problems we have yet to solve at global scale, many of the world's most brilliant people are working on inventing solutions. Scientists, engineers, entrepreneurs. Every day, more people choose to work on climate and our collective chance of success goes up. Here's just a quick snapshot of a handful of the many, many companies working on decarbonizing aviation, decarbonizing the production of fertilizer, uh, working on decarbonizing the atmosphere, carbon removal and carbon capture, decarbonizing energy production. And as an early stage investor, I can tell you there are many, many more startups out there. A carbon neutral future is possible, but we won't get there just by wishing for it. We need to build and deploy clean tech faster than we've ever built anything in history and make sure that that access is universal. This is the biggest challenge humanity has ever faced. And it's also an opportunity to remake the global economy for the first time from one that's extractive to one that's sustainable, that enables both humans and nature to thrive. And it doesn't have to be a story of deprivation. That's a lie we've been told for decades and are still being told by oil companies and the many politicians that they have bought. And why are they doing this? Well, uh, billions of dollars in profit every quarter is a pretty powerful incentive to protect the status quo and lie to people about whether change is possible. They're the ones who've been telling us that an electric vehicle can never be as good as a gas-powered vehicle. Well, tell that to everyone who owns a Tesla. Uh, clean tech is simply better and better performing, and it can be cheaper too. And we need to remember this as we aim high for the climate positive future that we want. I, for one, am super excited for a future without fossil fuels. I'm excited for a world we can build that can be safer, cleaner, better in a million ways. We've spent so long being told what's not possible that we haven't spent enough time thinking about what is. So what could a sustainable world look like? Science fiction can be instructive here. Uh, much of the technology we all use every day was imagined in science fiction many years, if not decades, before it was ever built. Planes, computers, robots. If we allow ourselves to imagine an ambitious, climate-positive future, what could that future look like? How about power plants that don't pollute and would even be fun to visit and to live near? How about a future where the air in downtown Delhi is as clean as the air in a forest? Or a farming system that repairs soils and draws CO2 back out of the atmosphere? How about a future where the best burger you've ever tasted comes from a cell factory and not a slaughterhouse? And a world where innovation and sustainable production removes pressure on the natural world and allows us to restore wild places. That's a future I'm willing to work hard to build. It's why I started my company Voyager, where I invest in early stage startups that are building these kinds of technologies and this kind of future. And you're all here because you've already chosen to do something to work on climate, and you're doing great work. So my challenge to you and to myself, to all of us collectively, is let's be even more ambitious. Let's consistently ask ourselves, how can we aim higher? How can we go 10 times faster and make our reach 1,000 times bigger? We need to meet the scale of the challenge with equal or greater ambition. We have everything to lose, but also everything to gain. Thank you.